All right, take a break from the news of the day. A lot of football issues that we just haven't been able to get into. Let's get a blitz. So let's get this blitz in the mix. Let's go! We have time for one more. All right. right. We might as well. Why does it always seem like wide receivers are the biggest divas? Pants, the silks. Nice job on the blitz, Mike. All right, let's go. NFL blitz, tons of stuff to cover here. Start out with something we haven't really talked about this week. Hugh Jackson fired by the Browns. Mike, your take on that whole situation. I guess kind of a weird time to get rid of him. Oh, but first of all, long why, time coming. why would you ever have Hugh Jackson as your head coach when you're drafting number one and drafting a rookie QB? You know you're not going to have a good year, and you know in all likelihood you'll be firing Hugh Jackson. That was mistake number one. Number two, you wait till week seven. There's brewing problems where Baker Mayfield has a disconnect with Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson made a fool of himself on on, uh, uh, Hard Knocks. You know, you've got Greg Williams now taking over the team. This is a guy who was involved in Bounty Gate. He's a defensive guy. How do you fire Hugh and the offensive coordinator when you use the number one pick on a quarterback? It, It the whole thing is a folly. Only the Browns, honestly, only the Browns. Completely embarrassing. Lincoln Riley, a possibility there or not? I would say yes. Uh, that to me is who I would write a blank check. I would put a blank check yeah. signed by Jimmy Haslam in an envelope, send it to Norman, Oklahoma, try to get him. If he says no, just remember, no matter what they do, it must be an offensive coach. Their only thing that matters, it's got to work with Baker Mayfield. Do Next. Me a favor, just kind of sit up. All right, I want to run through the trades. We've always been talking about Golden Tate a ton, rightfully so. But the other trades that happened yesterday. Broncos traded Demarius Thomas to the Texans for a fourth-round pick. Your take on that one? Um, Look, I like it. I think the Texans are in a weird spot. I don't think they're good enough to win everything, but they have won five in a row. Um, They have no offensive line. They're not going to be able to fix that middle of the season. So when they lost Will Fuller, they did the best that they could do to replace Will Fuller. Didn't think they gave up too much. Nice receiver in Demarius Thomas to put out uh, to the other side of DeAndre Hopkins. I like it. I just can't get carried away because I kind of feel like they're capped in what they can be because they are so bad up front. I'm asking just to be a little respectful in this whole process, okay? I see where this is going. Couple moves by uh, the Packers. Haha, Clinton Dix to the Redskins for 2019 fourth. And more importantly, from, I guess, a storyline standpoint, Ty Montgomery to the Ravens for a seventh-round pick. What do you make the Packers' moves? And is that is that Ty Montgomery trade basically a release? Yes, and I said it to you Monday when we came in. Don't be shocked if he gets cut. There's no way the Packers were going to abide that. Once it came out that he threw his helmet, had a rant, and pouted, once it came out that he was told he needed to stay in the end zone, then you got guys in the locker room, look, that was a 2020 seventh round pick. They released it. Now, as far as Ha Ha Clinton Dix goes, here's the deal. I think he's massively overrated. And I know he's a name. I, I know he's got the pedigree, Alabama, the whole deal. Just every time I watch, guy can't cover a rug. And maybe analytically, they love him. I don't. I was talking with someone on Sunday about how much I don't like him and whether I was wrong about him or not. They didn't disagree. No, I mean, Mike, I was. And I made the point. I went, listen, you know better than me. Tell me I'm stupid. I think this kid is way overrated. And someone's going to pay him, and it wasn't going to be Green Bay. They can we, go- might- <laughs> we might lose to the Brown. I-, I just can't. I can't handle Ha Ha Clinton Dix. I-, I think it's great. Get a fourth-round pick. Get him out the door. We might lose to the Browns. Last of the trade recaps, it was a big one. Jaguars traded Dante Fowler to the Rams for a 2019 third-round pick and a 2020 fifth-round pick. What do you make of that one? A chronic underachiever taking number three in the draft, blew his knee out. It's been it ha- He hasn't been what he's supposed to be, but defensive end with some upside. Maybe you get him around enough good players like in Jacksonville, but he gets a bigger role, different change of scenery. I get it. Rams are all in. The win now team. Yeah, I mean that the, defensive line. The too. Rams went to the whiteboard and went, who's the best pass rusher that's available? Who can we get our hands on? Dante Fowler's name came up. They're all in. So I'm fine with it, but I also don't think he's the difference between success or failure. I don't trust him. Sorry, Whitey. New drop from Jamie there. Oh my God. 
Uh, I want to circle back on a question that I asked you a couple weeks ago. Rams, Chiefs, Saints. Still clearly the top three teams in your opinion? Rams, Chiefs, Saints. Yes. Um, And again, you could throw them into a hat. You could have an argument about it. You could throw the Patriots in if you wanted. If you throw the Patriots in, there's your top four, and you can lock it up. But, yeah, those are the top three. And I think if you are a Kansas City supporter, if they played New England again this year, I think they beat them. I think Mahomes, the bright lights, the first time in Foxborough, you know, Brady, a little nervous early. I thought it cost them. I think the Chiefs would get them on the second go around. It's the same thing as if New Orleans gets home field, they're going to the Super Bowl. You're not going to New Orleans and beating them. So if you're the Rams, you better. You better make sure you don't end up in that dome in January. Next. Fury touchdown. Le'Veon Bell saga continues, continues, continues. Simple question with all this. What do you think the end game is? I have no idea. It, it sounds like he's not going to be traded this year. Any he, any clue what the end game he is? He has gonna... to report in order to accrue the year to be a free agent. I've always thought it was to get out of Pittsburgh. The problem is now this dude isn't showing up. It's headed to November. He could carry this thing to week 11 if he wants to. I don't even know what you do if you're the Steelers. I mean, I'm a big fan of Le'Veon Bell. I'm a big believer in his abilities. But James Conner has been very, very good. I just don't know what you do at this point. If he waits to week 11 and comes in, now you got an issue in the locker room. I, Mike, the end game is always to be get paid and probably get out. But this is not the way to do it. I mean, I... I, it's it's it. The whole thing's a disaster. He was trolling the organization the first three four weeks of the season. It's chaos. I'm just about that action, boss. All right, a series of bold takes here to respond to to close out the blitz. Drew Brees is the front runner for league MVP right now. Disagree. Who would be? Well, I mean, I think Cam Newton deserves a look. I think he's had a hell of a big year. Uh, I think Todd Gurley could be considered for it as well. I think Patrick Mahomes is certainly the leader in the clubhouse, though. I mean, Mahomes would be number one. I think Breeze, I think Gurley, and I think uh, Cam Newton would probably be, as they say in office space, right underneath him. I I just think Mahomes has to be your MVP. Finito. (laughs) Pat Shermer is not the MVP. All right, bold take or not, the Dolphins have now lost four of five since starting 3-0 and this season. Because they're garbage. Adam Gase is currently coaching for his job. Oh, yeah. He's next. I think after Hugh Jackson got clipped, I think he's next. And I'll give you the other one is Dirk Cutter. Yeah. And what they're – I told you Jameis was not the answer. I, I don't know why they went away from Fitzpatrick. Jameis Winston has been a complete and utter draft bust. He cannot stop turning the ball over. But, yes, to answer your question, I think Gase is gone. I think Cutter's gone. Zero doubt. Finito, as Pat Shermer would say. Finito. All right, next bold take. This one kind of circles back to the Browns question we had earlier. The Cleveland Browns head coaching job is a very appealing head coaching vacancy. Absolutely agree. Lots of draft capital, lots of young talent. No doubt about it. When's the last time we could say that about the Browns? Oh, it's been a long, long time. But no, I, I agree with it. But remember, I mean... You're still the Browns, so don't get carried away thinking you're going to pick up the phone. and We oh, might lose the Browns! Exactly. Don't, don't pick up the phone and think you're going to poach another team's head coach. You know, you're not, uh, you're not the Steelers. Next. Hey, I'm Coach O. <laughs> For no reason, sure. Bold take or not, Packers-Patriots this weekend. This is a must-win game for the Packers. Agree. And it has as much to do with their, their future schedule. The other problem is, Mike, I think it goes one of two ways. I think they either beat the Patriots or they get blown out. They gave away that Ram game because they should have been getting the ball down a point with two minutes to go and Aaron Rodgers. They're winning that game. You'll never convince me otherwise. Now it's can they rally? Can they go out there and get this done? I don't believe HaHa Clinton Dix is that good. Ty Montgomery, peace out. They either win or get blown out. I have no idea. I'm not a football expert. Thank you, Roger. All right, last question. We'll end with this one. The Chargers will win their division and the AFC. Hmm. Bold or not? That's bold. 
That's bold. But if you want to be fair you to couldn't the, just say division. I had to throw in a little yeah, kicker, too. If you want to be fair to L.A., look at the only two teams that have beaten them. Chiefs and Rams. That's it. They've done their job. I, I really could make a case that, that L.A. is the fifth best team in the NFL. That they are number five. But the problem is uh, number four and uh, number one reside in their conference. So that, that's a bit of a problem. One of them in their division. Yeah, in their city. Excellent, Michael.